Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a topic that's becoming more relevant by the day. How does electric charger actually power your car? You've probably seen electric cars silently cruising by, maybe even thought about getting one yourself. But when it comes to charging, what's going on under the hood or rather in the cable? How does EV charging actually work? Let's break it down in a way that's simple and makes sense right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. EV charging is essentially the process of transferring electrical energy from the grid or another power source into your electric vehicle's battery. Think of it like charging your phone, but with a much bigger battery and a bit more going on behind the scenes. Instead of filling up with gasoline, you're filling up with electrons. And just like your phone, how fast it charges depends on the charger and your battery's capacity. Now, not all EV chargers are created equal. Broadly, there are three main types, Level 1, Level 2, and DC fast charging. Level 1 is the slowest and most basic. It uses a standard 120-volt household outlet, the kind you plug your toaster into. It's super convenient because you don't need any special setup, but it only adds about 3 to 5 miles of range per hour. That's fine for overnight charging if you don't drive much, but not ideal if you're always on the go. Level 2 chargers are a big step up. They use a 240-volt outlet, the same kind used for dryers or ovens, and can add 20 to 60 miles of range per hour. These are what you'll often find at home, charging stations or in public places like shopping centers and parking garages. You'll need to have one professionally installed at home, but it's the sweet spot for most EV owners. Then we have DC fast charging, sometimes called level three. This is where things get speedy. These chargers convert AC electricity from the grid into DC power before sending it to your car, allowing for much faster charging, like 80% charge in 20 to 30 minutes for some vehicles, but they're expensive to install and usually found along highways or in commercial areas. Okay. Quick detour to talk about AC and DC electricity. Don't worry, we're not going full science class here. Your house uses AC or alternating current because it's easier to transmit over long distances. But your car battery stores DC or direct current. So when you use a level one or level two charger, the electricity comes in as AC and your car has an onboard charger that converts it into DC so the battery can use it. With a DC fast charger, the conversion happens before the electricity reaches your car. That's why it's faster. It bypasses your vehicle's slower onboard charger and feeds the battery directly. So, what's actually happening when you plug in? When you connect your car to a charger, they have a little electronic handshake. They basically check, are we compatible? How much power can I give you? How much can you handle? Once that's settled, the flow of electricity begins. Modern EVs are smart. They regulate the charge to protect the battery, avoid overheating, and stop charging when the battery is full. If your battery is low, the car might draw more power initially, then slow it down as it approaches a full charge. This helps prolong battery life and ensure safety. Let's talk plugs. EVs and chargers don't all use the same connector, at least not yet. In North America, most EVs use something called a J1772 plug for level one and level two charging. Tesla has its own proprietary connector, but they're opening up to other EVs through adapters or modified superchargers. For fast charging, there are a few standards, Shademo, CCS, Combined Charging System, and Tesla's Fast Charging Connector. CCS is becoming the most common globally, but you'll still see Chademo around, especially with some older or Japanese models like the Nissan Leaf. 
It's a bit of a mess, honestly. But the industry is moving toward more universal compatibility, which should make things easier in the near future. This is the million dollar question. How long does it take to charge an EV? Well, it depends. Charging speed varies based on the charger type, your car's battery size, and even the temperature outside. As a ballpark, level one, 24 to 50 plus hours for a full charge. Level two, four to 10 hours. DC fast charging, 20 to 60 minutes to 80%. You'll notice I said to 80% for fast charging. That's because most fast chargers slow way down after 80% to protect the battery and prevent overheating. For road trips, the general strategy is to top off to 80%, drive, and repeat. Just like with your phone or laptop, your EV battery will degrade over time, but smart charging habits can help slow that down. Try to avoid keeping your battery at 100% or 0% for too long. Charging up to around 80% for daily use is usually plenty, and only going to 100% when you really need the range, like for a long trip, is a good idea. Also, while fast charging is super convenient, doing it too often can accelerate wear on the battery. Occasional fast charges are fine, but relying on them all the time? Not so great for long-term battery health. The EV world is moving fast, no pun intended. Charging technology is improving every year. We're seeing ultra-fast chargers that can deliver 350 kilowatts or more, which could bring charging times down to 10 or 15 minutes. Wireless charging is also in development where you just park over a pad and charge without plugging in. Imagine pulling into your garage and charging automatically. No cables, no fuss. And then there's the smart grid. Some EVs will be able to send power back to the grid during peak hours, kind of like a giant battery for your house or even your neighborhood. This could help balance energy demand and make the whole system more sustainable. So, that's how EV charging works. From the different charger types to how electricity gets into your battery, it's all part of this big shift in how we think about transportation and energy. Yes, there's a bit of a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, Charging an EV becomes just another part of your daily routine, like plugging in your phone at night. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.